Yet ants have no idea that a material known as zinc even exists. Neither do they know their blades are coated with it. Cells in the ant's cutting mechanism miraculously coat the blades with zinc. There is a highly intelligent design in these little creatures' bodies. The same thing applies to the system that makes the leaves easily cut by means of sound waves. The ant can have absolutely no idea that high frequencies make things more brittle. Neither is there any doubt that such a complex system cannot have come about by chance. There is only one explanation for the existence of such a perfect system. The system was consciously created. Ants were brought into being by God, and the cutting mechanism and all their other features were given them by Him. Leaf cutter ants' nests can be as much as five meters underground and seven meters wide. They build hundreds of tunnels and chambers within the nest and dig and carry out some 40 tons of earth. The architecture of the nest is another miracle of its own. The ants do not eat the leaves they have cut off the trees because they feed only on a special kind of fungus. So what do the ants use those leaves for if they do not eat them? The answer is most interesting. They use them as the raw material for agriculture. They grow that fungus by means of that raw material. To that end, they set up hundreds of fungus farms inside the nest. You are now looking at one of those farms. The temperature, humidity, and size of the farms are all carefully regulated by the ants in order to grow the fungus, just like the greenhouses that we use to grow plants all year round. The worker ants hand the leaves they cut over to other ants that work in the farms. The ants which receive them disinfect the leaves before they start working. There is an important reason for this. The entrance into the nest of foreign fungus or even bacteria could cause terrible damage. That could mean an epidemic in a colony of some 500,000 ants. Yet God has created a very special system to protect them. A substance with antiseptic properties is secreted from the ant's bodies. The ant you are watching is disinfecting the surface of the leaf with its mouth. As a result of this process, no bacteria will be left on it. Just like us, ants also fight bacteria. Antibiotics are manufactured in laboratories for this purpose. Yet the antibiotic produced by the ants is much more powerful, and they have been using it for millions of years. Of course, these tiny creatures are unaware of bacteria and antibiotic substances that prevent bacteria from multiplying. Yet thanks to this perfect system that God has created, not one bacterium is to be found either on the ant's body nor in the nest it lives in. After finishing the disinfecting process, the ants then begin to cut the leaves up together. After cutting the leaves up into small pieces, it is then the turn of the very smallest ants to begin work. 
These ants are just two millimeters across, the size of a grain of sand. They spend their entire lives in these small underground chambers. They chew the leaves up into a pulp and spread it on the floor of the production area, making a bed of fertilizer upon which fungus is grown. Within 24 hours, the leaves have entirely lost their green color. By the next day, the surface is entirely covered with white fungus. The harvesting begins at once. The ants that perform the harvesting think of their colleagues, not themselves. They carry the fungus they cut off the harvesting chambers to the worker ants. Here, a harvester ant is offering the nutritious liquid it has obtained from the fungus to a worker ant employed elsewhere in the nest. By these methods, all the ants' food needs are met, from the leaf cutters outside the nest to those that chew the leaves into pulp. Five hundred thousand ants work continuously in the most perfect harmony and cooperation. After all the fungus have been harvested, only the remains of the leaves are left, and these need to be cleaned up. Workers carry out every little bit and leave the production chambers spotless. The leftovers are thrown away some distance from the nest. These hardworking creatures have no concept of rest or complaint. The colony also contains other ants with other duties. The defense of the nest is the duty of powerful, brave, and devoted soldier ants. The soldiers rush out, even at the sound of an approaching human footfall. Some giant soldiers are 300 times heavier than the other ants in the colony. They attack any intruder near the nest. They even bite the shoes and socks of anyone who approaches the nest. Once their jaws are in the flesh of any intruder, they never let go. They do not open their jaws even if other parts of their bodies are damaged, and they give up their own lives for the sake of the colony. There is no doubt that this is an example of great self-sacrifice. The leafcutter ants' worst enemies are wasps. Thanks to its powerful jaws, an ant can easily do battle with a wasp. Yet as their jaws are used to hold the leaf as they are carrying it, they are defenseless against a sudden attack at that moment. So how is an ant carrying a leaf protected? The answer to that question again reveals a tremendous cooperation in the colony. Let us have a closer look at the carrier ants. If you look carefully, you will see another worker ant on each leaf. These workers' job is to protect the carrier ants from a possible attack from the air. 